Hello, friends. Happy Sunday. Sunday, February 4th. Let's see, where are we? We are halfway through winter officially. Uh, what else is going on? Groundhog Day has occurred. Lunar New Year is this week. An Aquarius new moon is this week. Lots, lots going on in the energy a week away from the Super Bowl for those who celebrate. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a football fan. Not sorry to say it, <laughs> but sources tell me the Super Bowl is in a week. <laughs> lots going on, lots swirling around us. Okay, let's talk. Let's talk. It's Sunday. We have what we're going to talk about today. We're going to do, we're going to spend a few minutes where I will encourage you to plan and think about your week ahead. And it's so strange because I can't see if people are like participating, but I'll at least talk you through it for a few minutes here. And then we're going to talk about seasonal shifts and this energy of the season that we're in and setting your intentions and believing them and, and all that good stuff. So that is what we are doing today. If you are new here in our community hub, welcome. We are welcoming in new community members all the time through our magical self-care challenge that we've been running uh, for the past couple months, and we are happy to have you here. I'm Sarah, founder of The Sisters Enchanted, if you don't know that, and we've been doing this since 2016, so eight years this year. Before the Sisters Enchanted, I owned a different business where I helped kids and adults with learning differences and inner organizational and social emotional stuff that was kind of swirling, whirling to help get focused and clear and learn advocacy skills and learning skills and things like that. So I combine all of that with all the, the magic and many years of nature spirituality that I've had in my personal practice, plus everything I learned about people and human development through my other life and my interest in women's studies um, when I, before that. And I bring that all together here at the Sisters Enchanted. And if you don't know, we've got lots of teachers here and it's not just me. I'm supported by many teachers and behind the scenes teammates. So if you ever email in or take a class, you'll see some of those folks who are here to support you also. All right, let's start by thinking about the next week ahead. I always, I wanna try to do this whenever we do these Sunday calls, if I remember. Um, I have my Sisters Enchanted Lunar Planner, obviously, here. And I actually did this last night. I started to jot down different things that I have to do this week that are time sensitive on sort of just a little note in my planner. I do use a digital planner, as I tell everybody all the time. I am reliant on Google Calendar to tell me what to do, where to be, and when. If it weren't for those reminders, I don't know what I would do. We even have things that the family relies on, um, like grocery pickups and trash day. All of that is automated <laughs> to remind us because we are a house of neuro spicy people and people who have anxiousness and just dysregulation things. And we will not remember if anything has to be done. So um, we, everything gets automated, but I do like to sit down and sort of cast my energy for the week ahead. The way to do this, a life by design, a life that you're consciously creating that aligns with the way you want to feel on your future vision starts by being intentional with your energy. And that relates to being intentional with your time. So your energy is related to what you do with yourself. And there's this saying that, um, like if you, what is the saying? If you want to see, I forget what it is, but it's something like how you spend your time dictates, dictates how your life will be, <laughs> how you spend your time is a, is a projection or it's a, you know, um, can a spoiler alert to how your life is. Right. And so I'm a person who loves lots of white space and the freedom to do what I want. So I'm not an advocate of like scheduling out every minute of your life by any stretch of the imagination. But if you don't know 
uh, where what you're doing with your energy coming up, it's challenging to bring your intentions and goals into being so that you can feel the way you want to feel. So think about your week ahead. What are the things you have to do? Like they are time sensitive. They have to be written down. You need the alarms in your phone or what your calendar or whatever works for you. You need the sticky notes on every door and mirror in your house or your car, your whatever your strategy is. Those are the immovable things that have to happen. Once you have those locked in place, then we want to look at what do you want to do with the rest of your time to feel the way you want to feel. So for me, I I want to feel uh, like I have space. I want to feel connected to my family. I want to feel like I've taken care of my body. So I make sure that all of things that are related to that go into the calendar next. And I do this every single week. So I invite you to do that today. Some at some point today, put your what do you have to do, and then how do you want to feel? What goals do you have for yourself? What's your future vision? And put it down. I think that there is a um, there's a lot of like law of attraction and, and manifesting stuff out there that you can sort of hear about, and it talks about often aligning your energy. So whatever your energy is becomes a magnet for things, right? So if you're feeling overwhelmed and tired and completely depleted, you become a magnet for more of that. If you are a person who feels wishy-washy, you become a magnet for more of that. And I don't actually disagree with that. Where I sort of disagree with law of attraction and manifesting is uh, there's It can be really like hard swung in one direction where it's this entire energy game and we forget about very real physical health things and mental health things and um, very real financial barriers for women in particular who can't law of attraction their way out of a relationship when they have no financial means to live on their own and, um, you know, things like that, that I think when we just look at manifestation and law of attraction, we forget that there's very real stuff happening, that you're just realigning your energy isn't going to magically solve that thing. However, to open yourself up for the opportunity to find a solution that does start on the inside and anything you want to create in your life, we've got to start asking What story am I attaching to the energy? How am I spending my time? How am I intentional with the energy that I'm putting out in the world and the people that I'm communicating with? And how am I intentional in that communication? And what is that inviting back into my life through my energetic doorway? And what energy am I allowing mine to swirl with? And where do I need to detach? Um, And looking at how you're going to spend your next week ahead is a great practical way to start doing that, to really think, okay, here's what I have to do. And then also an extension to that is understanding your energetic patterns when you're casting your vision for the week ahead. So I know for me that come like 3 p.m., my energy just takes a a take a, like a total tank. I have um, some like health stuff that's none of it's huge life changing stuff, but it leaves me very exhausted come around 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And so I know that if I am thinking that I'm going to wake up and then go to work and then like stop working and, and get at the day, uh, that's not realistic, right? So for me, I have to do things for myself that I want to do earlier in the day. So I exercise very early in the morning. Um, I homeschool and I will often do uh, things with my kids very early in the day, like before 10 a.m. Because I know that when I'm after I sit down and work for like a few hours at my computer, there's no way I'm going to get up and have the patience to do those kinds of things. And then I can go for a walk because I know that I'll want to keep my energy moving because my frustration level is going to be higher because I'm tired, which is going to make me lack patience. So I think about my energy and how I can build my day around that. And if you're a person who works outside the home and your energy is similar You know, how do you stack your personal life around the commitment that you can't, like you have to go to work, right? So how do you build your life around that structure so that you're honoring your energy uh, and doing the things you have to do? And sometimes that takes big shifts from the way that you're already operating to make that happen. Uh, So your, what you have to do, put that on the calendar and then think about your energy, how your energy pattern is in a day. And then put in anything you need to do to support you in living the life that you want to live and feeling the way that you want to feel. 
Okay, there is your week ahead sort of overview. So get all of that in there. And we do have the new moon in Aquarius on Friday, which is also Lunar New Year. We're leaving the year of the rabbit, moving into the year of the dragon. Uh, and there's like lots of planetary action happening in Aquarius this week. So Aquarius is, I'm an Aquarius moon myself. And it is like an innovative, outside the box, eccentric, can be a little like, I will say firsthand can be a little high and mighty. <laughs> when I feel like I am definitely right, I can be in my personal life for sure. People in my life will tell you, Sarah can get on her soapbox and you can't get her off. <laughs> so that's Aquarius energy. It's a what, what is your most authentic self, but how does your authentic self contribute to the collective? Aquarius is very collective centered, also humanitarian, uh, doing, doing, leaving a legacy, impacting those around you. And so I think that we can, particularly in the time that we live in, where we have access to just everything negative that's happening around the world, all the stinking time, it can feel like we have no agency and can't do anything to help anybody. And it's just an impossible uphill battle. But what we forget is that just by being this beacon for people in our lives, that changes somebody else in that day. And then that changes somebody else. And the way you choose to be in the world actually makes a really big impact because how you choose to forgive and how you choose to manage your energy and how you choose to communicate and show up and the little micro decisions you make every day in human interaction, they change somebody else's day and how they then might go home and react to somebody and how they might think of themselves. You know, one thought to somebody where you might have said, that's a dumb idea, <laughs> but instead you say to them, interesting, I don't think I would have thought of it that way. Like that little shift in conversation, all, like you put a light in that person that you might not have otherwise, and then they go home and maybe put a light in somebody else, or they go out in the world and, and say something differently. And that's how we start to radiate change just by being in a different energy ourselves. All right, we can, this all starts with thinking ahead for the week. I did see a question that came by about the February calendar. Yes, it was emailed out last week in last week's Sunday email. And I've not seen today's, I don't send them. I write them, but I don't send them. Um, well, I write the letter. If you get the Sunday email, I write the letter and I write the try it activity and the rhythm report. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> I don't put them together and send them. So I haven't seen it, but I do know it was in last week's and it might have gone out this week. Um, so I would definitely uh, check check those emails. And then if it hasn't been published in the community group yet, I'm sure Jenna will do it this week. All right, let's see here. I'm just checking comments. Uh, yeah, NeuroSpicy. Yes, my family in our household, um, we've got, uh, there's there's four of us in our immediate family. We've got some official diagnoses. We've got unofficial diagnoses. We've got, you know, uh, therapists and doctors who've said, I'm pretty sure <laughs> this is the case here. And uh, so we like to just use this neuro different term for everybody uh, here in our here in our house. <laughs> but it's definitely an interesting house that we live in where everybody has very unique needs and we're all home together all the time, which makes it um, very challenging. Let's see here. Oh, Karen sharing uh, scheduling time to pay bills is tough for me. Yeah. Um, so that's part of my rhythm. I do everything in a rhythm. Otherwise, I would not remember anything. So I, as you know, being here, of course, everybody is different. So you got to figure out what works for you. Um, but as an example to how I do this, and then we'll talk about seasonal shifts, because it is one of the things that we hear. Uh, we had 10,000 people have taken our expansion archetypes quiz. And one of the questions is about planning and follow through. And 50% of people, of 10,000 people responded, like they'll make the plan, but follow through is the struggle. So, uh, and I am the same way, like follow through and actually doing the thing I set out to do. You have no idea how many half started Sisters Enchanted, like classes and workbooks and things there are, because I get this like big idea and I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. But then I get another idea and then I stumble upon the other thing and I'm like, that was genius. Why didn't I finish it? And it's not for no reason. It's just or it's not for a reason. I just got distracted. Like, I'm just like, oh, next thing, what's in front of me? Out of sight, out of mind, which is a very real thing, out of sight, out of mind. So really establishing rhythms. Every morning I check all my bank accounts, partially because I am a business owner. And so we have, you know, a big team of people here <laughs> who got to get paid. So we check, I check bank accounts every day. And then every Friday, 
is when I sort of reconcile all of the funds, right? Every Wednesday, like we do our, we take our home garbage out, our tr it's trash day. So every Wednesday, we've got certain things that get done every single Wednesday because it's trash day. And lest you think I just remember this, we have a, we have um one of those devices that you can talk to. I don't want to say it because they'll start talking to me, but that gives us four reminders as a family on Wednesday that it's trash day. I kid you not, my life is this automated. We have four reminders that say, don't forget, it's trash day. And it goes off at different times throughout the day because we will forget. On Friday, um, I have notifications that pop up in five different places that say Financial Friday. And it pops up in five places. <laughs> <laughs> I have automated tasks to myself in a task software I have. And that shows up in my email and also in like a chat thing that I have. It's also on my Google calendar and all these accumulate together show up in five places to remind me to do it because I am the same. I will totally forget to pay the bills, <laughs> not because I don't have the money, because I just will forget to pay them. So making a rhythm and then making your life easy by using technology that's available to us. I hear this so often from people about like how bad the world has gotten. And I, you know, I'm not here to like discuss the ins and outs of that. And I think that a perspective shift is we have more access to knowing what's going on in the world than we ever have. But also how beautiful is it that I am a woman who has estrogen dominance, small blood cells, so I'm exhausted all the time. I have adenomyosis and endometriosis. My period cycle is every 21 days, so I'm pretty much always exhausted and hormonal. I run a business, I homeschool, and I have all of this technology that reminds me what to do. Like that is so beautiful <laughs> because 50, 60, 70 years ago, I probably would have had an emotional breakdown by now for lack of resources and been put on a drug I didn't want to be put on or like my great aunt or great grandmother or my grandfather's first wife who all have, who all spent time in a facility for like breakdown, right? And it's because of this overwhelm and this hormonal stuff that happens to us. And I don't have to just suffer that because I have technology. And so I let technology do its job. And that is to tell me what to do <laughs> so I don't forget it. And that is a really beautiful thing of this part of the world, this time that we live in. Because in the past, with lack of knowledge, lack of resources, I probably would not be able to do everything I do in my life because I, I have access for homeschooling. Like my kids, they can learn engineering from a, from a NASA scientist like tomorrow if I sign them up for an online class for goodness sakes like there's just so much beautiful support and access and I think that you know where we start to think like oh my gosh so all this technology and but where's it's can also be an amazing tool that women before us like I can only imagine that my great grandmother or great aunt who spent you know, six to 10 weeks in, or my, my grandfather's first wife, um, this time in facilities for just like being crazy when really it's just life overwhelm, hormonal overwhelm and lack of knowledge on women and how we work. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. It's a hill I will die on. If you were between the ages of 35 and like 60 and, or beyond that, so you've lived this, the way that your hormones fluctuate and change it's different than being born with a brain with ADHD, but traumatic brain injury, um, PTSD, CPTSD, hormonal fluctuations in women, they the symptoms present all similarly with this like disorganization, can't remember things. So different thing happening inside, symptoms present the same. And so treat it as such, <laughs> treat it as such and use the tools that are at your disposal to help you to get through the week ahead. Uh, really use those tools. Yeah. Marcy says we don't have to keep a fire going at all times to feed and warm our families. So, so, so true. Um, we live in a, an exceptionally wonderful time to help support us in things that in the past women just did not have and had to really suffer through. And we don't have to do that. Uh, so utilize the tools. And again, 
um, if you came in, I'm on a, I'm on kind of a bender of a thought here, but really we use those devices that you talk to and that I don't want to say mine because it'll start talking, but you know, like there's a couple different brands, some really big ones, the big popular one <laughs> that every, you know, you, everyone says you, they just listen to you. They, the powers that be, and maybe they are, they probably are. And that is totally fine with me at this moment because that device saves me every single week when it reminds me to do things like pay this bill, pay the taxes, take the garbage out, doctor's appointment. Yeah, Melissa's got it. I can't say it. Mine will start talking. And if I say the other one, my watch will start talking. That's how <laughs> that's how technology, like I really, really lean on technology in my life to keep me moving forward. Um, so we have these resources, you know, use them. If I just wrote in a physical planner, there's no way I'd ever remember. Nothing would ever get done. So I use my planner as a more of like a journaling experience. So I did write down with my hand because there is benefit in handwriting. When you handwrite something, your brain does process it differently and it is more ingrained into your brain than if you type it or speak it out loud. So I do handwrite, you know, like dates and times and I do it every single week. Uh, but it's more of my presence experience. You know, how do I want to feel? I'm writing all this stuff down. Some of it I have to do. I've got no choice but to do it. And like, if I'm writing it down, I feel like, oh, I really am not looking forward to this, right? Then that tells me something about how I'm structuring my life right now and the decisions I'm making versus if I write something down, um, like I have an appointment tomorrow at two o'clock and it's uh, on Zoom, but I'm so excited about it. Like I cannot wait for two o'clock tomorrow because I really want to discuss this thing that the appointment is about and I'm jazzed and that makes me feel really good versus uh, there's one on Thursday I have at one o'clock. And I'm kind of like, uh, is that even going to be worth my time? I'm not sure. And so I can start to see where I've made commitments that are out of alignment with what I want for myself. And um, I use my handwriting as this sort of reflective presence process. And then everything's also in a digital holding space to tell me where to be and when, because <laughs> I will forget. Some of you may have heard it was a couple of weeks ago, but I, we were, I took my family to uh, my kids and my husband, we went to a science center and it was a day that I don't normally work, but myself and all of team TSC, we had committed to a call as part of this group thing that we participate in. And it was at like, I don't know, noon or something. And we were pulling into the science center and my watch gave me the, this things in 10 minutes. And I had to message the whole team. <laughs> like, I'm the one in charge, you know, but I didn't have it written down. It wasn't part of my normal rhythm. And I was like, all right, I'm going to be there, but I'm going to be off camera because I'm at the science center. So I just had my camera off and my sound off. And I just kind of listened, you know, <laughs> and still so I could like chat, but um, it'd be as present as possible because I totally forgot about it, but it was a commitment and I had to be there. And uh, so I, you know, these things happened to me. This wasn't that long ago. Actually, it was the first week. It was a month ago, first week of January. Um, and uh, thank goodness though for that reminder, or I would have missed it and it wouldn't have been the end of the world, but it wouldn't have been a good look on me either to not show up. So uh, those are helpful. All right. This actually ties into what I wanted to talk about today, which was seasonal shifts and the seasonal kind of where we are in the season. So we are in the midpoint between the first day of winter and the first day of spring. So we're right in the middle of this. And the winter time is where we set our intentions. So we talk about lunar intentions and solar goals here. If you're in holistic witchery, you're going to learn all about that. And there, I see we've had um, a bunch of people sign up this past few days. So welcome if you've joined us over there. Uh, you're going to learn all about this lunar intentions. So intention and goal, they're actually synonyms. They can, you know, you can use those words interchangeably, but we differentiate them in that we want to start with how you want to uh, feel, right? How do you want to feel? And we start there because we can set goals and like new year's resolutions that are just based on some way we think we need to be. So if I set a goal, for example, um, some of y'all are small business owners, so we can use this as an example. If I set a goal that like we were going to make, 
one billion dollars <laughs> this year. <laughs> Not even in the wheelhouse of realism. But if I set like a wild goal like that, right? And then I I asked like, why am I setting that goal? Well, because somebody somewhere told me that successful businesses that's what that's what they do. That's what they look like. That's based on some expectation. Or if you set a goal this year to lose forty pounds, and then you, but that's because you think you need like somebody, and that could be like somebody, a doctor may have said you, you really need to, um, like for your health, like my husband's in this boat, he's got very high blood pressure. It's just not looking, he's pre-diabetic, like not looking good for him. Right. And, and maybe there's those things, but for women, often we just sort of look in the mirror and decide we need to lose some weight because we think we need to, I. Uh, and both of those are just because somebody said like, that's the right thing. That's what it needs to be. But can you ask yourself, like, how do I want to feel? And maybe in this money example, I just want to feel like comfortable. I want to feel like everyone's taken care of. And when I think about that, when I shift my mind from making a certain amount of money to I want to make sure Team TSE is taken care of. I want to make sure you all are taken care of to the best that we can take care of you. Then I can always ask myself that as my beacon, like is do I feel that way? Do I feel like everything is supported and being taken care of? Because if the answer is yes, then this like random number doesn't really matter. What matters is that the number matches that this is happening the way I want to feel. The same with health. So you might say I want to lose 40 pounds, but truly if you if you start exercising and you gain muscle, there's a good chance you won't really lose weight, right? You because muscle when you gain muscle, you gain weight. Um, and you might actually solve some of the health things, but not lose any weight. So then does it become this feeling of, well, I want to feel like I can walk a mile without having to sit down, or I want to feel like I can play with my kids or my grandkids, or I want to feel like I can carry every bag of groceries at once. So I don't have to take multiple trips to the car and I'm so strong. And I can do that. For me, I, I want to feel like um, I take my kids hiking frequently, just myself and my kids um, just by ourselves, right? And so if we are three miles in the woods, I want to feel like if one if somebody gets hurt, I'm strong enough to carry them out until help arrives. Uh, I don't want to feel stranded. And so I move from these place of feeling. So we start with feeling. How do you want to feel? And then from there, we set our goals. So what does that look like? Um, a goal for me might be that I can comfortably carry, you know, 100 pounds while walking three miles. That's that's what that looks like. So I can I can do that. Um, and um, for the bank, like a goal might be that we always have this buffer of cash because we know if there's an emergency, then that's taken care of. But we start with how we want to feel and align the goals that way. And where we are right now seasonally is really starting to settle in to how you want to feel. And we take time to do this. So the winter season is a full like 12 to 13 weeks. And we get an extra day this year because it's there's a 29th in February. So we got an extra day to sit on it. But we really want to like slow cook how you want to feel because it's challenging to disconnect from all of these expectations. And it's challenging to disconnect from everything that you've been told throughout your whole lifetime of what you should look like, what you should believe, what a good so-and-so looks like in society. You know, all of these things we've been told that make us good and make us worthy and right, they're deeply, deeply ingrained in us, like very deeply ingrained in us. And so much so that you you might think like, oh, I totally like don't buy into that. And then in these like little tiny ways you are and don't even realize it. I mean, I do it. We all do it. And so we want to really slowly consider how do I want to feel? And part of this weekly forecasting planning experience I was talking about at the top of the hour is around that, making sure that we are making choices that are in alignment with how we want to feel and not just on um, some way we're trying to be because somebody told us we should be that way. So this is really the time of year. We've reached this point where the days are getting longer again, and we want to settle into how we want to feel for the year ahead. And if you feel like you want to attach goals to that, then attach goals to it. Uh, I actually don't set that many goals. Like I'm not a big goal setter because I find that I, I'm a wanderer in the expansion archetypes. And I, my birth chart is like 
riddled in Scorpio and Sagittarius. And then my midheaven is a Pisces, which is get, you know, you get lost between reality and uh, not reality <laughs> pretty easily. And so I contend to, when I set goals, like really lose sight <laughs> of what's actually possible and what I think is like, oh yeah, that's so doable. And then I'm like, wait a second, that was so not doable, Sarah. So I don't set that many goals and I really focus more on the vision and how I want to feel. So if the vision is that I can take my kids safely on a walk and be able to carry them on my back out if something happens, then when I walk and hike and move my body, does it feel like I could do that? If the answer is no, I got to do something different. Um, if I go to pay all the bills for the month and I want to feel comfortable and like everyone's taken care of and getting what they need. And if I go to pay the bills and it doesn't feel that way, I got to do something different. If I want to feel like my marriage is like and cozy and it doesn't feel that way, I have to do something different. And so this feeling, this is what we want to lean into during this time of the year. And we can tend to set these feelings, but then, or like claim them for ourselves. And then we can falter on taking action out of, for various reasons. One of those is because when we start to change how we feel, I think that it can be really, I don't know, what's the word I want to use for this? It can feel like we are invalidating is that the word invalid as a former english teacher often i cannot find words that i know are real words or that i'm making up <laughs> we are lessening our past experiences by shifting our energy and that will actually keep us from moving forward so an example in my life uh, if you're new here i love to give life examples um, marriage is an example I use often. Marriage has been very challenging for my husband and I. It's not something that was natural or easy. And I had some spots where I thought for sure this is just not going to work. Like this is, what was I, <laughs> what is going on here? And um, so when I move forward though, and I think, okay, well, I want to feel this way in my life and I want to feel this way in my marriage. That does require you to do some shadow work and cutting ties with the way you used to feel. And I think that when what holds us back from doing that is we feel like in some way we're invalidating the previous experience. So if I just decide to wake up one day and not be mad at my husband and like love him for all his flaws and, and think to myself, you know what? He's doing his best right now. He really is. And when I change my thought process, what can happen is this like, but remember all the times he said these things and remember all the times he did this and it was so hurtful and he never apologized. Remember all of that. There's a piece of us that if we disconnect from that, like we're afraid that that experience just goes unseen or unvalidated or like, but what about all that stuff that happened that was never reconciled? And this is where we can set the best of intentions and the best of goals and intentions, particularly for how we want to feel and really sabotage feeling that way because we're so attached to this stuff that makes our story valid and that makes us who we are. And it's a really, I think, tough thing to reconcile to say like, well, yeah, all that's true, but I'm just deciding today not to feel that way. And I'm just deciding to do something different. Um, I can look at this with parenting too. My childhood was uh, tumultuous, is putting it lightly. <laughs> and my father is not, wasn't like present, didn't raise me, um, but had, I have three half siblings who are, you know, delightful people, uh, but he raised them and, you know, he's their dad and wasn't mine. And so now when I see him from time to time, uh, we don't live near each other. So I've, I've not I've seen him, you know, a few times in my whole life. Well, not a few, but I don't know. How old am I? I don't know. I've seen him in my adult life a handful of times. And I, um, when I see, I could be so angry and sometimes I am, but I can also say, well, I want this relationship when I do see him to feel fulfilling. And I can say to myself, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't a young dad who was like, you know, just told to get married and, <laughs> and didn't even like that. My mom and him weren't even dating. They were broken up when I was conceived and they got married a couple months before I was born. And so I don't know, like, I'm not in that position. I can't speak to what I would do. 
And does that invalidate the pain? Or when I see, like on Father's Day on Facebook, my siblings that are like, world's best dad. And I'm like, interesting. <laughs> world's worst dad. Does it invalidate my experience? No, my experience is my experience. And is it serving me though? If I want to feel a certain way at some point, you got to not feel that way. And I think that when we set intentions and people sabotage, it's because we're very attached to feeling the way we once did, because it says something about us and it makes our story true and it makes our story valid and it makes our story who we are. And this is a lot of what we teach in holistic witchery. And if you're in magical self-care, you're going to start to unwind some of those stories in there too. Like that's a great place to start that work. Uh, and that's really where we come in uh, hot, hotter than other people is that we take this emotional, um, like internal brain impact that we have from living our lives. And then we apply the magic to it. So what can we learn from the moon phases to help us release and move forward and put rhythm in our lives? What can we learn from our, um, from chakras? How can we take how we want to feel and then use a tool like a crystal or tarot card to help remind us of that? Right. Uh, but so this is the time of year where we're really settling into how we want to feel and if you haven't decided that, you know, there's still six weeks of winter ahead, but consider, you know, how do I want to feel in my life? How do I want to feel just today? How do I want to feel in the week ahead? And look at your, how you're spending your time. Is it allowing you to feel that way? Uh, if goals feel like you never meet them, I, I, I give you freedom, permission to not set them <laughs> and ask how you want to feel. And when it comes to, I, for women in particular, and for men, like my husband, I said, I said, he's got high blood pressure, super high blood pressure. He's on two different medications at once for it. And like, it's just, is not coming down. And he has, has gained weight over the years of our marriage. He's pre-diabetic, all these things. Uh, and even him, you know, the doctor right away is like, we'll lose weight. And that's, he, you know, he, I, I can say that that, that would, maybe that would help him. And also though, if he built muscle and didn't lose weight, you know, I think he'd still get healthier. And so often what we're, what people say to us is just also what they're used to saying. And if we don't contextualize it in our minds in a different way, or if we don't know to ask follow-up questions, or we don't know what we don't know, we can just take what we hear and then let that say something about us. You know, we can just very easily let it mean something about us that it doesn't necessarily mean, but it's, because we just operate like reflexively often and to start to undo those things. Um, I saw uh, Marcy asked about the expansion archetypes. We'll definitely, we'll put the quiz in uh, the magical self care for you, Marcy, for sure. Um, and we do have a class that gives more information, but I've got some resources. So uh if not today, tomorrow or Tuesday, we will get some things up there for you, Marcy. And Marcy's also sharing neural pathways are built on the old way of thinking and feeling. Yes, exactly. There's this whole um, discussion. And again, this is coming from my previous career where I worked with people with learning differences. And I was particularly interested in uh, one of the things I uh, studied a lot around was, um, well, I was also very, very, in, I minored in college years and years and years and years ago about on uh, women's studies and so sociology, psychology, and uh, from a women's studies focus. And then when I went to school for education, I was always very curious about the relationship between women in society and then what kids think about themselves, probably also because I was raised by a single mom and my, uh, she's, my mom's been married three times. She's on her third marriage. And my exit, my, experience with dads has been lackluster to say the least, <laughs> to say the most, I guess, <laughs> to say the most, it's been lackluster. <laughs> I could say a lot more than least. Um, and so I was just really interested in this, you know, like, what is it that about women and kids and just how do we create the world that we live in? And there is, there are definitely huge questions in the world of brain development. It's like a chicken or the egg situation, you know, um, like kids in particular who have learning differences, there is the question where you know, sometimes were kids, it's clear from birth because there's something that happens with birth or right away when a, a baby is born, maybe something is 
um, like glaringly obvious, but some kids who at like age seven, right. And you're like, oh my gosh, this kid, maybe they have ADD or something, or maybe they're dyslexic, but no one noticed it till now or auditory processing or whatever. And there are all these questions, were they born this way? Or was it an impact, something that happened in their life that then changed their neural pathways to create this situation? The same comes with uh, um, PTSD and the and then ADHD symptoms that arise after. And, they, and it's unanswerable at the moment. Like what, again, what's first, the chicken or the egg? Was the underlying symptom already there and nobody noticed? Or did the thing that happened with the brain then create the new symptom? And it's interesting because there's been no real like um, traction on these questions. And so the reason I mentioned that right now, when it comes to this, how do we want to feel and conscious creation and whether you want to call it manifestation, law of attraction, conscious, I like conscious creation, um, whatever you want to call it, life by design. For the life that you're creating, doing the shadow work, setting the crystal grids, pulling the tarot cards, working with the new moon, the rituals, all of this stuff that we're doing, the science tells us that there is all of this happening within you. And if we don't acknowledge that and work around and with that, it's very challenging to actually go where you want to go in life. So, you know, what, whatever you do, if we're not saying I want to feel brave enough to hike alone um, in the woods, <laughs> but I'm not doing it for some reason. That's where we have to start doing this investigative work. Where is the stuck spot? Where is the story? Where is that? Is If you want to call it your neural, neural pathways, your neural pathways, or you want to call it your energy stories or whatever you want to call it, where is the resistance and start to uncover it. But we also have to keep focused on how we want to feel because if we don't keep focused on that, it's easier to just be the way we are and forget about the way we want to feel. It's easier to stay the same than it is to be a different way. It's way easier for me. I'll be honest. It's easier for me to be mad at my husband than it is for me to not be mad at him. <laughs> it's so much easier for me to just be like, God, you're killing me. <laughs> that is easier. But I love my husband and I love our life and I love my kids and I love our family and I am here for it. And so I focus on how I want to feel in this relationship, how I want to feel in this life. And I act, I start to act accordingly. And then reconciling this fact that it doesn't invalidate the fact that it's hard and it doesn't invalidate anything that happened in the past. Um, like with my siblings, they think they've got the world's best dad. That does not invalidate their experience. They do have the world's best dad. I don't, but they do. And it's the same man we're talking about. And it's because we just have different stories attached to this figure. And when we can do shadow work and we can start to look at our stories and come back to neutrality and understand, well, what's really true here? And what is my brain just like exploding on because I'm emotional and sad and like becoming this like wild swirling mass of tornado chaos and not breathing, centering and asking, how do I want to feel? What's true about my story and what's true about the story I'm creating? And then go back to that. Um, and that's the tools. When any, any of the classes we have here, those are the tools that we are hoping to arm you with <laughs> so that we can do that work together. Um, and as far as the seasonal shift, we are in the point in time where we are, again, settling into how we want to feel. And we want you to take your time with that because also... You know, if I, if I, and words matter, words are the spells you're casting in your mind, the words you think and the words you say out loud. Uh, I'll use my marriage as an example. Again, if I wanted to feel like so supported by my husband, I'll be honest, my husband, he's, he's so kind. My husband, my grandfather has dementia and my husband is the one who cleans up. If there's like a bodily function issue, he cuts his toenails. Like my husband is the one that it, when, when things get like hairy, he is the one we call we're like listen, we need the guy who deals with the hairy situations. That is my husband. He was like that when we had babies too, when there was like messes. He's, he's the dude for that. He's, he's good at that kind of thing, but he's not like a soft emotional man. He will not give you a hug and tell you how hard you tried. <laughs> that is not my husband. <laughs> he will make a joke, try to pour you a cocktail and then tell you to get over it. That is my husband. So he's not like soft and cushy, but he's very kind in how he shows up in the world, but he's not soft and cushy in his emotional self. So if I said, I want, I feel so supported and like seen by my husband, 
that is those words in the spell I'm casting. That is not a spell that's going to come true <laughs> in the way that that feels. But if I said, I feel so, I feel so, uh, I feel like my partnership is strong. If I said that, that feels like, yes, my partnership is very strong. I could call my husband from, you know, right now and say, so-and-so that you've never met is an hour away, stuck on the side of the road with a flat tire. He'd be like, oh, I got to put on actual pants, don't I? <laughs> I'd say, yes, <laughs> you do. And he'd go help that person. And so I feel like I'm in a strong partnership or I feel like I can be honest with my husband. Like if I want to say that, which I can be honest with him, I might not get the answer I want from him or the response, but I can be very honest with him. Um, so saying the way that you want to feel also looking at what is like, what is, what makes sense for you? You know, what makes sense for you in your life right now? So when I look at my next week ahead, I have a pretty open week. If it was a week where everything felt like I had appointments every day, lots on the calendar. And then if I said, I want to feel so spacious this week, like it's probably not going to happen. And I'm really setting myself up for failure <laughs> because there's no space on the calendar. Um, so then I might say, I want to feel like my energy is mine this week. Uh, and then maybe that's, maybe that's the better angle because then you through all this, the output you're doing, you want to feel like you're coming back to yourself. So when you're thinking about how you want to feel and setting yourself up for success, that's another thing to consider there also, um, which is what we're doing this time of year. All right. Lots for you to think about today. Lots of, um, you know, looks into my life, which I'm always happy to share. Just checking back. I'm trying to watch the comments as they go. Uh, a Teresa was sharing hits home for me, poor relationship with my father, need to change my mindset. Yeah, I know something. What did I see? I don't know if it's like on social media or the radio or something popped up and it was just like the number one thing you learn from your dad. And it's interesting because I've never, I've never been a, a dweller, you know, like I don't really dwell on things. I guess that's a strength of mine is to not dwell, but I never sat down and, and like thought about really, it wasn't the sometime last year that I really thought about the fact that like, I didn't have a typical or like helpful father figure. Um, my stepdad, my parents were married. Uh, they were married from, we moved in with him when I was seven and I was 12 when they divorced. And he very much influenced my personality. Actually, that was in the email that went out today. <laughs> no, no, he didn't. That goes out next week. I wrote it. <laughs> Never mind. That's coming out next week. I wrote the email yesterday, and that's for next week. Um, but uh, he very much influenced my personality. And most of the not good things about my personality, I think I got from him. <laughs> but he also is the person who introduced me to nature and um, canoeing and hiking and peeing in the woods, you know, <laughs> like this came from him. And that's a really big part of my life. Being out in nature is a huge part of my life. So I thank him for that. But somebody said this and I was like, my actual father who like, created me, I can't think of one thing I learned from him. Not one. And that's not, and I really thought, I was like, did he, when I went to, cause like, we only saw him one week a year growing up. I was like, when I was learning to drive, like, did he, when, no, no didn't see him that summer, you know, like, what did he teach me? And I was like, he taught me nothing. And it's such an interesting thing when we can just look and say, well, that's true. It doesn't have to mean anything though. It doesn't, it can, does it have to, does it serve me to mean something and start asking those questions. And again, it, um, doesn't take away the gut punch when I see like on Facebook, my siblings that are like, love my best dad ever. And then I just have to remember if that's true for them. And that's so good. That's so good for them that they have that. Uh, and and so lots of things can be true at the same time. All right, Deirdre sharing, getting started is easy. Follow through is hardest. Yes, forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is challenging. Forgiveness is challenging. Kathy's husband's not soft and cushy either. Yeah. <laughs> My husband's so nice. So many women in the Sisters Enchanted community, since we've been doing this for almost eight years now, he's met probably 50 to 100 
sisters enchanted people in person and he will go pick women up from the airport if we have an event and they need a ride he's like the luggage guy he cleans up after the dishes and the food and the catering and he is so good and so kind but he is he's not he's not who you go to if you need like a word of <laughs> if you need to be coddled he is not the guy to go to <laughs> Do not go to him for for coddling because <laughs> he will coddle. He will not. Um, yeah. Holding grudges against yourself for sure. For sure, Denise. All right. Let's see here. Uh, Tracy says, I'm not soft and cushy. And my husband and I argue about it all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a whole talk for another day. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to put notes down for a future talk about how when you and your your partner, husband or wife, when you or your partner are very different in your relationship styles, because I am more of like a do things for me and say words of affirmations person. And my husband's love language definitely involves physical touch. <laughs> <laughs> so that's been a journey of, uh, that's been a journey also. So that can be a definite talk for another day is what to do when you find yourself in that space. Um, cause I'm not perfect at it, but again, my background in social emotional, um, ways and how people think and then react and women's studies. And then my own life experience, I definitely have thoughts and things I can say about that. Um, and how we've navigated that in our life as well. Uh, let's see. Kimberly, my husband's one of the girls. Yeah. Uh, Karen's dad was a nurturer. Mom was introvert. Yes. Best friend. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. Uh, Beth never met my dad or that side of the family, but found you. They live near me until I moved at 16. It's so fascinating, Beth. Uh, Megan says, I'm not the one you want to vent to. Yes. I will say my capacity for woes me is pretty low, which is, I think, one of my definite can be a personality flaw. Uh, I can definitely have that like, so what are you going to do about it? <laughs> Energy like, okay, <laughs> now what, what are you going to do? Um, Melissa's relationship with dad is healed, very verbally abusive. Um, oh goodness, nearly stuck on your stomach when you're pregnant. Yeah, scariest time, but you've forgiven him. Yes, forgiveness is freedom. Uh, Patty says, describing husband perfectly. Yeah. All right, let's see here. Uh, polar opposites and spouses. Yeah, I can definitely speak to that in another chat, especially with Valentine's Day coming up. Maybe we'll talk about that next week. Um, a little bit around that. Let's see what I can get some words of wisdom together. All right. Well, thank you all for hanging out with me for this coffee chat on this Sunday. I appreciate you being here. So get out a planner, get all the tech devices to support you for the week ahead, reminding you of what you want to do and why. Um, and think about how you want to feel for this year ahead as we're in the seasonal transition, moving from winter slowly into spring. Uh, things coming up in TSE land. Uh, lots on deck for classes this week. So if you're enrolled in classes, Holistic Witchery, Enchanted Journey, uh, um, Magical Self-Care is the word I'm looking for. I think we've got classes for everything we offer that has a class component this week. I think everything is rocking and rolling this week. So be sure to check your events section. If you use a digital calendar, you can click the add to events button in the events and we'll add it. I use Google Calendar and I know it adds it right there for me so that I don't forget that I have an event to go to. We hosted a 7.30 event Friday night or I hosted one and I cannot tell you every 15 minutes from like 4 p.m. till 7.30, I thought I'd forget. I was like, I'm going to forget this. I'm going to forget this. I'm going to forget this. I was so worried I'd forget. Yep. Astrology Fundamentals as part of Holistic Witchery that starts this week. So if you're interested in joining um, Holistic Witchery for that or Magical Self Care, definitely reach out. We've got uh, Jenna and Anna checking the inbox today to get anybody where they need to be for um, classes this week. Uh, all right, then. Thank you for hanging out. I appreciate it. I appreciate y'all being here. Appreciate you all being here in our community and have a great week. I will, I'll see you next time. Bye.